This video is sponsored by Regin Dojo, which offers training courses for Regin and technical art from veterans of the industry. Head over to Regin Dojo to find more about it. Alright guys, so today uh, I want to talk to you about how you can compile OpenCL kernel using Clang and also why you might want to do that. Um, also the reason why I'm doing this tutorial because it's going to be as a base for future videos I'm planning to do, all right? So if you know anything about OpenCL, you usually know that you compile your uh, kernel at runtime, meaning you tell uh, in your code, you say, hey, OpenCL, here is my kernel, take it. And the driver is gonna compile that on the fly, gonna give you back ex executable, and then you use it, all right? Really, really similar about what you do with shaders, like OpenGL shaders. Uh, although you can compile them offline. With that said, uh, one annoying thing is that you need to run your application in order to know if you have syntax error, for example. That's one good reason why you might want to compile them offline, right? Because if you work with a simple executable which boot fast, you don't really care, right? You boot it quick, you see the syntax error, you fix it. If you start to work, in like in a Maya environment with a pipeline and everything where Maya takes ages to start up, it's a really slow uh, turnaround, right? Uh, so that's one reason. Second reason, if you compile it offline, you can easily see the code, right? So if you want to have a look what the actual machine code is, uh, if it's doing what you expect, same things you do like for, for example, with Godbolt, uh, compiler explorer and similar, right? And that's actually what we're going to do in later videos. We're going to compile PTX um, and assembly code for OpenCL and see, okay, the same code, how does it behave in different platform and so on. All right. So AMD did a lot of work to uh, be able to compile OpenCL code using Clang, right? So if we go there, there is a user guide for MD GPU backend for LLVM and they explain a lot of stuff that we're going to see today as well, right? So basically they expand an LLVM to be able to speed out code for their GPUs, which is really smart because you get all the benefit of LLVM, so really optimized code uh, and so on. And you leverage an open source compiler since they're pushing for that a lot. So in this specific case, this machine is um, an AMD machine we had with a uh, RX 570 and a Ryzen uh, 1700. Uh, so we're going to compile for AMD on this machine. Then we're going to do in another video with PTX uh, on an NVIDIA machine because it boils down to PTX and then you compile it normally as it was CUDA code. All right, so let's get started. First of all, you need to have a copy of Clang. To be honest, I don't know which version they added in. I used it in mm, Clang 5 and Clang 6. Might well work with 4. I do believe it works with 4, but you might have to test it. All right, so what we are going to compile is this simple uh, kernel, right? The only thing it does it read position as a flow tree and it stores them. You're supposed to do some stuff in here. So this kernel is actually comes from the Maya dev kit, right? It's an example to see how to get an OpenCL kernel going, all right? So, so we have um, the kernel here and I did uh, write down the command because I'm never gonna remember that, all right? So let's start to see what it does, all right? So first of all, you, you need to have Clang in your environment. Then you can specify for which CPU, and it's called CPU, but basically uh, it's also GPU because it depends uh, what kind of processor you're, you're targeting because AMD also has integrated GPUs, right? So in my case, it's really new. So GFX A10, works well and the reason why I know that is because you just go here in processor you have all the list of the one you have so here is targeting RX 460 um, so you can pick up the same actually I picked the wrong one so let's fix that 
is 04 because the other one is an integrated GPU, all right? Then you need to pass a, um, a target triple, you can see here, right? So it's AMD GCN, AMD, AMD HSA, open CL, all right? Open CL. So you find this, you need to find the right triple based on what you want to do, all right? So in my case, I want to do OpenCL. I, I am on a GCN3 card, uh, and I want to speed out OpenCL, all right? So that's where I got this parameter from. Um, then you want to tell to just to compile, you don't want to link it. S is going to generate basically a uh, human readable uh, file, right? X is just gonna say, hey, this is actually OpenCL code, then is is 03, fine. You pass in uh, the file you want to uh, compile, and now here is the thing that took me a while to figure out, and I actually found out the solution on this random post, um, on a blog post here, which was for PTX, but it helped me solve my problem as well from this guy, I'm not gonna spell the name because I will never uh, do it right. But basically, uh, since usually OpenCL is compiled at runtime, it's the driver that knows um, the built-in function, because of course, based on the driver, you might have different implementation, different stuff, and so on, based also on the different platform you're targeting. So in order to know, for client to know, okay, well, what's this function you're calling is a built-in function probably, but I have no idea what it is. You need to use this library uh, called libclc, which does exactly that. Define for Clang all the function, uh, built-in function, like for example, get global ID, which tell you which thread you are on and so on. So you need to download it somewhere and you need to include it uh, uh, forcibly. And then, of course, uh, you need to find this. It. So, uh, so let's compile it, CLC, generic CLC, oops, sorry, generic CLC and CL.h. And it's not finding it because, of course, I did it wrong. Generic include, and here we go. So if we check now, we have an identity dos s which we can cut, all right, I, sorry, if I can type today, all right, so this is our kernel, all right, so this is the part we want, this is actually our kernel, this is all metadata uh, that gets dumped down, right, like the, the group size, all this kind of stuff. So this is our kernel, so if we open the DCL, we can kind of see what's going on. Because, all right, so here we get the global ID stuff, which is here. We are loading the global ID. Fine, then there is a NIF statement, right? Where basically say, hey, if I'm, a thread is valid, means basically this thread has some data to process on um, and is not a spare one, um, do this following code, all right? So basically it is the branch. So either jump. Uh, so if the branch is not valid, it jumps to this label and it get out, basically jumps all this code. If it's valid, it goes in and we see, we can kind of see what's going on here. Here we have a load tree function. So here we are loading a tree and that's some interesting stuff about this we will see later. Sorry, in another video. And here is basically storing them. Here we have the store, all right? So this is our assembly that uh, we run in our car. Right, and that's how I got it to compile. Um, you can also generate intermediate uh, uh, clan code, right? So rather than S, I think he is emit LLVM. There we go. So we should, oops, sorry, we should have a LL, LL file. Actually, it's a BC. Let's see. All right. Entity.bc, and that's actually it's not human readable. So let's keep the S in there and let's see what we get. Yeah, 
Oh, here we go. Identity.ll. Here we go. That's the file I want. Cat identity.ll. And that's the Clang intermediate representation of our code. All right. Now, this is not the only way to do this. You can actually use Code Excel, which is an amazing tool. And I use that often when I want to do this kind of stuff. All right. So let's run Code Excel. Uh, Code Excel. Code Excel. All right. So what we can do here is go and build an analyze mode. All right. Switch to analyze mode. Thank you. Then I want to add a source file. And this is, takes ages to open the folder. Don't ask me why. Here we go. So this is my uh, OpenCL kernel. Fine. Then I go in. I build it. Here is some useful uh, stuff about occupancy if you're using the right resources and everything. But what we want to see is the assembly code. All right, so here it actually got compiled for several different versions. Um, and is, here is what you get, all right? So this is our kernel, which looks like slightly different, but is, uh, it does roughly the same thing. Uh, you see here we have the branch. Um, here we are doing the flat load, uh, the or times three. Then we are basically uh, doing some extra stuff that probably the assignment, the copy, uh, because we are moving, whatever. And then we do the store and then we get out, right? But of course, you can see this is nice, really nice to read. This has colors, has operands, op code. It tells you when it can roughly how expensive the extraction is, right? So we can see that a multiplication, right, is actually really expensive, right? 16 cycles. Um, here's the cost of the branch, probably if it's taken or not taken. And here, other extraction. All right. You can also see the binary for the code if you're interested. But also here it tells you, right, uh, it's a scalar operation, it's a vector operation, um, it's flow control, uh, memory loading, uh, or memory operation. So it's really interesting. It gives you a lot of insight into your code. All right. So that's how you use a code Excel to get that, right? And the code you can see looks fairly similar for the different platforms, right? So uh, that's it for today, guys. So see you in the next uh, in the next.